Cosmic Star Heroine. This is a turn-based RPG, which plays a lot like Chrono Trigger. This is from the people who made Cthulhu Saves the World in the Penny Arcade games. I do have to say this was sent to me from the publisher. In fact, it would have to be at this point since it doesn't officially come out for the Switch for another two weeks. However, I'm disclosing it like I always do. The story is about Alyssa, a woman who works at a government agency. While on a regular mission, she retrieves something that makes her rethink everything she's been doing and goes up against the government she's been working for. This game has a lot of story in it but unfortunately it's told like someone who just had 50 cups of coffee. To say the story goes a little fast is an understatement. I'm going to try and keep it as spoiler free as possible, but seriously, I'm going to need to get into some of the specifics. But all this was basically in the first few hours of a 12 to 15 hour story. Okay, for example, she turns against her agency and tries to steal back the device she found. She comes to this decision in the span of a few text boxes. She barely is woken up from her sleep and she decides to betray her government. The same government right before his bed she had no problem working for. Then the co-workers she come across also have no problem becoming traitors. It almost becomes a joke. They introduce someone just to have them join up even if it makes no sense. Why are there so many traitorous people in this agency? Don't get me started on the whole logistics of the submarine plotline. How are these people getting in and out of an underwater sub? People infiltrate underwater cities and they infiltrate submarines like they're crossing the street. Why is this sub turning into a spaceship? Are we really talking about the ghosts of fish? I have lots to say on the breakneck speed of the plot, but to say there's a few plot holes is an understatement. People will join and leave your team fairly often. There is a point where you can pick your team, and I was glad for that, because some of the characters that you had to use in battle were just awful. The plot moved forward with some lovely cutscenes. There's even a song in here! And the production level is quite nice. Let's talk about the battle system, because I thought it was quite interesting. Each character has different moves they can do, whether it be elemental attacks, healing, or just regular attacks. The twist is they can only be used once, then you have to choose something else that you haven't used yet. So you're going to want to save your most powerful attacks until you get more powered up. More on that in a second. You can refresh your attacks by defending one turn, and all your attacks will be usable again. It's their way of making it so you have to use all the options in your battle menu. The abilities and attacks that you can use in battle can also be switched to your liking. So if you want someone to be more of a healer, you can change their battle menu to have more healing moves, assuming you've unlocked those abilities. I did like that since customization is always a good thing. You can also use items in battles or a shield ability, which can change on the shield that you have equipped. One of the more surprising things is that when you use an item, it's only gone for that battle, and you can keep reusing the same item for each battle. So items in this game are more like a different kind of attack, but they do limit you on the amount of item slots you can have, so you're going to need to pick wisely on what items you equip. Most of the enemies are weak to something, but the twist is that the strength of your attacks will go up the longer the battle goes on. There are style points that you can see as a percentage by your HP indicator, so usually you're going to want to use your weaker attacks in the beginning, or you're going to want to stun or disarm your opponent before using powerful moves. The longer you wait the more powerful that move is going to be. So you're going to need to remember that in order to stay alive. You can also do kind of a super attack when all of your dots are filled in. You can see that by your HP meter as well. And those will give you more powerful hits. So you're going to want to really use your best attacks then. And not everyone has the same amount of time in order to get a boost. The one thing that I liked was they refilled your HP every time a battle was over, so you never had to stress about healing your characters. Later on, the enemies start having way too much HP, and that gets a little irritating. Happily, you can avoid fights because you can see the enemies on the screen. They won't respawn once you kill them. If you want to grind for levels, you can in certain areas by going into the menu and choosing battle. It'll spawn a battle for you to fight. There are different difficulty levels, which can be toggled on the fly in the options menu. So if you just want to experience a story, go for the easiest level. Or you can turn it on hard mode for more difficult battles. I like the fact that you weren't locked into it. You can try all the difficulty levels out to see which one was more enjoyable to you. Cosmic Star Heroine was alright. The cutscenes in the game were great, and there were some really impressive moments in it. The main problem I had with the game was the flow of the story. It felt way too rushed. Everything that felt like it should have been explained way better was just skipped over to get to the next plot point, which was disappointing. When this game comes out, it's going to be $14.99, and I think you should wait for this to go on sale. The way the story was structured really disappointed me. If they had just slowed down a little and had a little more character development, this could have been really good. If you can find this for $9.99, I say go for it. Until then, I say wait for it to go on sale.